The other day I found that my light Sussex hen, Liza, wasn't being as active as usual. The other chickens were happily scratching and pecking and investigating the world, but Liza didn't seem to be quite as energetic as usual. The next day she was sitting like this, withdrawn, tail down, not wanting to move around much, not interested in leaving the chicken run to go out into the garden with the others. She is clearly sick. If a chicken is acting as obviously sick as this, then she is sick, because as prey animals, chickens typically try to hide their illness from any predators that might be around, from their flock mates, and from you. Poor Liza, what can be the matter? She hasn't laid for the past few days, but it's been unusually hot here, and I had put the lack of eggs down to the heat. Chickens will go off the lay if it's too hot. Check out one of my other videos all about the reasons that can cause there to be not many eggs in your nest box. But it's now obvious that there's something wrong with Liza. As I was watching her, she gave me a big clue. She did a poo. And in the poo, I could quite clearly see a worm. Ew, that's disgusting. Especially in my chickens. I like to think that I care for my chickens pretty well, but that looks awful. What is it, and where did it come from? Well, it's a roundworm, and it's probably the most common parasitic worm of chickens. Poultry roundworms are Ascaris galli. They belong to the nematode class of worms. If you see one in a blob of chicken poo, you will certainly notice it because they are very large. They live in the gastrointestinal tract of birds including chickens, sometimes latching on or burrowing into the intestinal lining, but mostly just hanging around in the gut, eating the contents of the intestine the food that the chicken eats. The worms lay eggs that are excreted with the chicken poo. The worm eggs are then picked up and eaten by another chicken, and the roundworm's life cycle continues. I know my chickens are at risk of roundworms because I let them free range, and so they come into contact with soil where the wild birds have been. And even without the wild birds, I know I introduced roundworms onto this property when I got a rescue hen who was riddled with worms. The worm eggs can live in the soil for more than a year, so as long as I have chickens, I know I will always have the possibility of infection from roundworms. Adult hens can coexist with a few roundworms in their gut, but a very bad infestation can make the chicken lose weight become anemic and lethargic, and possibly cause diarrhoea. Liza is clearly not happy, and I want to get her some help as soon as possible. And that's going to mean an anti-helminthic medicine. Some organic measures can help. For example, research has shown that ground up garlic in the chicken's water can go some way towards preventing or controlling a build up of worm numbers but it can't actually cure an infestation. Commonly recommended treatments for roundworms and chickens are ivermectin, levomisole and piperazine. Of course, just our luck. This is not a good time for Liza to be sick. It's the beginning of a long holiday weekend and our usual vet is closed for three days. What can we do? The only option is a pet store or a pharmacy. But that is an option because humans and our pets get roundworms too. The most common human roundworm is a related species called Ascaris lumbricoides. And medicines that treat nematode worms are usually effective against a wide range of parasitic worms. But I need to be careful. Medicines that are okay for mammals are not always safe for chickens. I need a broad spectrum wormer that is safe for birds. I do a bit of research myself and I also chat with a vet nurse at the pet shop. They have a wide range of worming medicines for pets. 
Unfortunately, the only ivermectin product they have must be given orally. And dropping anything down the throat of a chicken is a very risky business, liable to cause suffocation or drowning unless you're an expert. And I'm not an expert. Levomisol, marketed as nilworm, is also extensively used for farm animals. Cattle, sheep, goats, pigs, and it's also safe for use with chickens. Levomisole and flubendazole are marketed for birds as aviverm and flubinvet, but none of these are available from this store. So I look at all the products they do have, and there's this one. It contains emodepside and proziquantel. Emodepside kills a wide range of nematodes, including roundworms, and proziquantel kills the flatworms, the trematodes, flukes and cestodes, the tapeworms, both of which can be carried by birds and transmitted by earthworms, so my chickens are probably at risk of those too. Both emodepside and praziquantel are safe for use in chickens, and what's more, this product is designed for use as a topical product, just spotted onto the skin from where it is absorbed into the body. So that will do nicely. But one other thing to consider carefully when using any medicine off-label is the dosage. This tube is one dose for a large cat, but chickens are not that big. And also, remember, chickens are not mammals. So the dose rate for chickens cannot always be calculated simply by scaling for their size relative to a cat or a dog. For each chicken, I need about a third of a milliliter, which means each tube will dose three chickens. So I transfer the contents into a small syringe so I can dispense it out accurately to each chicken. Since all of my chickens free range over the same area, they are all at risk, and it's a good idea to treat all of them. Then it's just a matter of dropping the required dose onto an area of Liza's skin that's not covered in feathers. There's usually a patch of skin with less feathers right under the wing. And in a few days, Liza will be looking much happier and resuming her usual activities. So, if you have to deal with a situation like this, here are a few important points to keep in mind. Chickens that free range are at risk of catching nasties from wild birds, earthworms and parasite eggs in the environment. When chickens are kept inside with a hard floor that can be cleaned easily, it's easier to control external infections. This is one of the factors to consider when you decide whether or not your chickens should free range. Check out my video for some other factors to consider. Always get advice from a qualified vet if at all possible. Ideally a vet who specialises in poultry or birds, although special bird or poultry vets are rare. Remember that chickens are not mammals. Some medicines that are good for humans and dogs and cats are very dangerous for birds. And even if the product is safe for chickens, chickens might require a different dosage because they are smaller than most pet animals and because birds' physiology is different. A few days later, Liza was looking much happier and resuming her usual activities.